Hi and welcome to Drumming. In this video I want to share with you a basic technical exercise for the drum set which involves using toms extensively. It's a great place to start if you want to learn to smoothly incorporate toms in your playing without breaking the groove. It is a four note linear exercise, meaning there are no overlapping hits, at least not in the beginning, and is the fourth mode of what I call three against one meaning three in the hands, one in the feet. Fourth mode, because the hit in the feet occurs on position four. We start by defining the sticking as single stroke row. Because of the nature of single stroke row, odd-numbered phrases will change the leading hand, so we want to cover both directions. The sticking then becomes a symmetrical two-fold phrase. We start in the simplest way with just a snare, a kick and a hi-hat. In the beginning, we want to make sure that all the hits are pulled up to the same height. Experiment with different dynamic levels at medium speeds until you get the hang of it. Play with either right foot or left foot against the snare. You can also play in rotational manner, substituting every other kick with hi-hat with the left foot and thus creating a phrase twice as long. This feels more natural, kind of like walking also addresses both sides of the body. You can expand further by forcing a wide paradiddle pattern in the two feet to get this. However, this is still three-way coordination, as at any given moment there are three limbs opposing each other. The best way to approach four-way coordination is to add a meter against the occurring three-way line. Let's keep it simple the line in the context of a 2-4 measure. There's a few ways to apply the hi-hat as a meter. One would be to play both quarter notes, positions 1 and 3, and the other to play the hi-hat only on position 1. The latter would lend itself to faster tempos, when the phrase will effectively become 16th notes. The third option is playing the hi-hat only on position 3, laying down the foundations for the jazz feel in which the hi-hat occurs on 2 and 4 in a 4-4 measure. Now that we've created the overall structure, it's time to make some tonal variations by adding toms into the mix. The first thing we will try is to play a tom on position 1, while keeping the snare on positions 2 and 3. Due to the symmetrical nature of the pattern, we would have to alternate with which hand we hit a tom. So we apply a simple rule to define this. If it is a right hand hit, we play on the floor tone. If it is a left hit, we play on the small tone. We're going to use this rule throughout the variations, but feel free to experiment and change up, as long as you can keep the symmetry. At first, you might find it useful to practice each direction separately. This will give you the chance to focus on the details. For example, let's look at just the leading hand. It goes like this. The secondary hand will only have one hit to add and it is a tap, so lightly and with a relaxed wrist. To make this pattern flow, the leading hand hits must be connected. To achieve this, sort of pull out of each drum, jumping on to the next. You should always try to make this a smooth experience, sort of look for the easiest way it can be played, without having to fight the drums or yourself in the process. Let's try the left direction. Here it feels different and harder because now the left arm has to travel forward and back, so pay special attention to this. The best way to achieve a flow and connect the hits is to properly set up the hand which is about to strike. So the goal is to transport the hand into a striking position and only then strike. If you wait for the last moment to transport the hand, this will result in a frantic and tense motion where you will be forced to throw the hand at the tom, which in turn will produce skips in fast tempos. So very important, properly set up the hand which is about to strike, and do this independently of whatever is going on at that particular moment. Now it's time to put the two directions together. As always, try to make it be a smooth experience, both for you and the listener. If you're going for accents, you can underline the toms a bit and keep the snare lighter. This will give it a bit more texture and dynamics. Now 
let's try a variation of this. We play the snare only on the first positions. The remaining two hits are played on the toms, so we get this. As usual, the left side of things can be a drag, so make sure you spend extra time to get it into shape. The same principles we will apply as with the previous example, but the directions will feel reversed. Playing these lightly and in a relaxed fashion is paramount, as this will allow you to hear more tonal variation from the instrument and will keep you at an efficient energy level, thus developing endurance skills. Keep working on connecting the hits, meaning the hand never really stops after a hit, it just transforms the rebound of one hit into the next hit. Let's try yet another variation of this. Now the default position will be on the tones and we'll be pulling inward to hit the snare on position 3. If you temporarily don't play the kick part, you will get a clearer picture of where each hand has to get to. Also try adding the meter in the hi-hat part, still with no kick, you would notice the hi-hat falls on a tone. On the other side, if we isolate the feet, we get this. You'll notice that the kick precedes the hi-hat, so keep this in mind when you start to accelerate the tempo. It helps to isolate the two feet to see clearly what needs to occur. In this case, the direction is toward a strong stomp with the left foot on the hi-hat. If you do that, make sure you're playing 16th notes on positions 4 and 1 and not slide into the more relaxed triplet with positions 3 and 1. I suggest using a metronome set to a 16th note to keep yourself honest. This particular variation is very useful because it lends itself to an accent on what is effectively the backbeat, so you might find it more musical to underline the snare hit on position 3. Of course, that will make it also harder. Once again, go for smoothness and don't overpower the process. Another variation you can try is when the leading hand plays both notes on the snare with position 2 played on a tom. This way you will effectively have a half speed double stroke row on the snare on the 8th notes, but the tom hits and the kick will be on all of the offbeat 16ths. If you invert this, the double stroke will occur on the toms while having the snare on position 2. Also try to apply this to the cymbals. We keep the snare on position 3, but the two toms become the two cymbals and the kick becomes the hi-hat. This will give you an interesting all cymbal sound. For added challenge, aim for the bells of the cymbals. This will force you to concentrate on precision and effectiveness rather than speed. To get faster, make sure you move quickly to the next position and then just tap, rather than trying to throw the whole arm at the cymbal at the very last moment. Once again, connecting all the hits in a given hand will be the solution. With the left foot being a part of the pattern, we can now try to use the kick as a meter. This is pretty handy, as now the kick falls on one, giving you an option for a steady feel beat with a pretty interesting sound. So these are what I think the basic variations of this particular pattern. Of course you can expand greatly using different variations in sequence or mix together to form longer lines. Be sure to explore all these and give it plenty of time. After a while patterns like this can become an integral part of your vocabulary and the source for new ideas. An in-depth approach to drum exercises will ultimately give you better results. It is better to know one pattern at 100% rather than knowing 100 patterns at 1%. Feel free to ask specific questions regarding this exercise in the comment section below. Also, please like and subscribe, that way I'll know you want to see more free videos like this one. Thank you for watching Drumming.